say that just make sure you give you a bit simple because we're right. not doing it. She, and like I said, they use a formula to determine whether, okay. how much they're going to give you, and based on that, you know, they, the well, you ambulance service it. won't get one. They didn't feel like they would need it. Right. I'm good. Well, we I just just remind you. If y'all want me to. Sure. sure. Yeah, yeah, so. Uh, I want to exclude See, I, I, I mean, I, I think this is exactly what we need is people mm -hmm. to sit down and talk to us. I'm going to give y'all some uh, you notes to put on. all these questions. What's this for? What's this for? And you won't listen to the people explain what it's for? Is that this one, David? Uh, that's I, I went back to the 2014-2015 budget and pulled numbers to run the Veteran Service Office of County County. Uh, one change you'll see in the 27-18 column, uh, that was an estimated, but it was not executed because it was in the 2017-18 budget period, the VSO went defunct no longer funded and of course it was not funded in 1819 the budget we just closed out um, but as the commander of Hilton Stone Post 279 the largest uh, veterans organization in the county uh, I think it's time to uh, go back and open the VSO office and I think we can uh, I've been talking to in fact just so you know for the last two years uh, Post has been taking care of all the veteran service issues that have come up. We've had 84 that have come in for service. Uh, 66 of those were valid, and we helped them in this past two-year time frame. Uh, so, I mean, you can see if you take that over a 24-month time frame, actually, you might as well say 25-month time frame at this point, the numbers aren't very high per month. Uh, talking with the VSO offices in McMinnville, Manchester, over in uh, Rutherford County, and then up in Smithville, most of those have a full-time VSO and then a part-time. I don't think we can justify a full-time VSO here because we don't have the numbers of people that need to be helped. There is a state requirement that to have a accredited VSO because currently we are not running under state accreditation. We are operating under the American Legion as a service organization that was established by an act of Congress. We're running through that accreditation process. But to have a county VSO that's accredited, they must work a minimum of a thousand hours a year. The way I think we can not have to work somebody a thousand hours a year, because I really don't think we need. I think we need about, you know, no more than probably 21 hours a week. Okay, probably we we'll get by on 15 hours a week. Three days, five hours, three days a week, we could probably do this. In fact, this proposal here for salaries is based on a 15 hour work week, 50 weeks out of the year, because you're not going to see anybody over Christmas and we can give them another week somewhere, maybe in maybe the 4th of July week or something. Uh, but I have three candidates that are part-time VSOs. One of them is a part-time VSO at McMinnville. Another one is a part-time VSO at Manchester. And the third one is a part-time VSO in Rutherford County. And in essence, what they're doing to get their 1,000 hours every year is they are doing part-time work in multiple counties. They're kind of home-based. Their primary place of duty you know, might be McMinnville. And they're working, say, two days a week there, but then they're pulling three days a week in Rutherford, or they're pulling three days a week maybe at the VA or, you know, their office. So the, to, I think, you know, when we kind of look at the throughput of people we have coming through the office, I mean, which, you know, typically is like, you know, two or three a month. Okay? It's, it's really low. If you had a VSO that worked three days a week, five hours a day, those three days, most of those hours, the Legion would still back that person up. In fact, what I'm, I'm telling all these guys is that if we bring you on, you've got to become part of our Legion post 
so that we got some control over what you're doing so we can provide input. Uh, they've all agreed to that. Uh, but we're looking at roughly $12 an hour. That's kind of a, the low end for a county BSO. Uh, and cut the hours back, as I pointed out. Uh, the one thing I know is going to be a big expense probably the first year is 719 office equipment, but because we'll probably have to buy a new computer. Because the one that's over there right now is much like the problem that we brought up earlier tonight. Uh, the software that's on an operating system is no longer supported or about not to be supported. So we'll have to buy a new computer. And if we, if the post feels like we need, you know, we're going to exceed this amount, we'll fund whatever we need to throw in there to, to get whatever they need to run. Uh, so for first year, I've in essence got us down to a half a penny in tax. And then I think in the second year, we'll definitely be able to reduce the amount on office equipment. And we're actually talking about funding office supplies out of the post because I, I bulk buy, buy supplies for the post and no matter the, I mean really the only thing they're going to use is paper and file folders, so that's pittance. Uh, I've got a printer that I'm donating to it, so it's it's a scan, does scanning, does like a three in one type deal, so that, that'll take care of the print problem, so we don't have to, you know, pay a, now I, I'm pretty sure there's probably this maintenance agreement saying what may have been a you know, a high speed, low drag printer. Uh, that can be cut. We can, we're gonna, I said, I'm gonna give them a, a printer that will take care of most of the workload. And if they've got something that needs to be done that they need to run a bunch of copies of, I've got an industrial printer in my office. They can just email me the forms, I'll run them off, and they can come by and pick them up. So we, you know, so there's, there's a little bit of fat here, not much, but it's less than what we paid you know, in the past, let's just say three years we've actually executed and the one year we planned but didn't execute. Uh, so I'm just throwing this on the table as a uh, as an option. I did not have this in any budget that I presented last week because I didn't know this was an option that we were might want to reopen. We had the service until but I absolutely last year. support it one hundred percent and and fully yeah, well, funded. I have zero problems. I didn't think we should have ever taken it apart. I didn't think we should take it out of Well, and, and, and I said we could. We can probably, uh, you know, as I said I think I think three thirty four's got fat in it. Probably three forty eight. A little fat, of course, is not much. It's Fifty bucks. Uh, what I'm trying to do is work a deal with the, the Rutherford County. In essence, is the regional hub. Of course, their office is set up right there next to the VA. So I'm trying to get them, because they get VA money, to fund all the travel requirements. And since these guys won't be, they're not going to be primary employees for us. They'll be secondaries for us. Okay, so they'll be primary for wherever they're primary right now. But they're willing to, to you know, to come in and work an extra three days a week, 15 hours for do us. Uh, and this is becoming, you know, every, every time I go to a big Legion event, all the VSOs are there, and they're always complaining to me, why don't you have a VSO? And I'm like, yeah, we do. I'm in. You're looking at him. Uh, I'm just not in the office all the time, but they know how to get a hold of me. So. I, I fully anyway. support it. So are, are you one that's helping to transport these people to Murfreesboro if they need transportation? Absolutely. We are. You we are? are? Yes. Thank you so much. So, I mean, I agree. Brent helps out. Of course, Brent was kind of the lead for the first year until he ended up getting elected. Uh, I was backing him up. Now I'm running it. And then if I need help, I mean, there's a bunch of people in the, in the Legion that are retired because the average age is like 72. Uh, so if I need help, I can call on one of those guys if, uh, if it's a day that I can't take somebody to the VA in either Murfreesboro or up at, uh, in Nashville, we work it out. So yeah, we're, we've been transporting a lot of people to appointments and taking care of the paperwork and you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, well, that's so, one tax increase I will never complain about. So and, and, Sorry, go ahead. No, 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 it's not on the budget now. No, I don't right? have it in there. Okay. <clears throat> can we? I mean, we, I don't know that we can make a decision. Well, I don't either, but well, well, can we put that in the budget? Yeah, in the next meeting there. Yeah. And once the whole thing is proposed and 
there more one that's I agree. Full sustainable. Well, I, I, I'll, I'll throw this on the table to say, you know, tra full transparency. I have talked to Brent about this. We, we've kind of gone back and forth. He asked me to put together a proposal and to bring it to the budget committee. So he knows I'm here. Well, see, David, unlike them, I don't think that's conflict. No, Even though your brother-in-law's, you know, I, I, I don't see that as a conflict because I think you're doing something that the county executive asked you well, to do. Well, I, I think because I'm, you know, the, well, the leader of the largest know, veterans organization in the county, I'm, that kind of fits in my, my baby. But, but I just want to make sure I, I don't view that as a conflict. Well, I, I, I wish you would never cut it. I, I think, think, I think, I think it was, it, it, in my opinion, it should be on there for years and years to come. I agree. Ten years to come. So, and, and I think we can do it very economical. And, and really, I think that after our first year out, I'm going to make them, make them keep a lot. I want to know exactly how many hours we're working the next year. If we don't need that many hours, we're going to cut back because we're already going to meet the 1,000 minimum for each. Because the 1,000 the hour requirement is a state requirement. The federal government doesn't require that for service organizations. I could work two hours and be accredited. To the, to the American Legion. But from a, a state level, this is in all 50 states, a, a county VSO has to work a thousand hours. But I figured out, well, if they're already working VSO work in this county and this county over here, and they're coming in here two days a week, there's your thousand hours. Because it yeah. goes by the individual, not by where they're doing the work. Right. work. Right. So, great. I think it's great. Thank you for, Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Glad you stayed. Do I get a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion we adjourn. I'll second it. Even though we ain't got a quorum, so technically we can't make motions. That's right. <laughs> I'll Let's walk out the door. I'm going to get mad. I'm going to get mad. So, really, I guess we're just adjourning. We're just, we're <laughs> well, we we're actually, information we technically, it adjourned when we lost our quorum. I guess it is. Okay. And there's no reason to do this in my business. I, 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 well, I don't see any reason to do this. I'm, I'm turning my video. Well, look, Brent, set one for the commission, and uh, we'll, that's what we'll do.